what you see in front of you is something that arrived in the mail this morning. Something quite interesting, actually. I'm just going to put the antenna up. Just because that adds to the style. Here we are. This is a Cybeco, as you may have guessed. Now, this was a portable console released in about 2000, 1999 2000, um, by Cybeco. And basically, it was a portable handheld console designed for teenagers, not just for game playing, but for accessing the internet, for chatting, for staying in contact, for schoolwork, for lots and lots and lots of different interesting purposes. Now, these the company went bust uh, basically because they were selling these units at a loss at twenty nine ninety nine, which was ridiculously cheap considering what the thing was and what it could do. Um, I mean, for God's sake, it had wireless functionality back in 1999-2000. And they released lots and lots of applications for it on the internet for free. That was the problem. The applications were free. They did not sell them. So I have the packaging as well, but we'll just look at the unit because I've got it set up in macro mode at the moment and this camera is so confusing. You can see at the top you've got the shortcut buttons. These allow you to access applications within the unit. I'm not sure what most of these are, but we'll try. The home screen, contacts, I guess, alarm clock, games, a game called Labyrinth and a game called Silandia, two of the biggest games for this console. Now, you've got a keyboard, which has a ridiculous assortment of buttons. Um, you've got a D-pad, uh, up, down, left, right, obviously, which is kind of awful because it's all made out of rubber. I'm surprised it works at all, to be honest. We've got the escape key, which powers it on and off also. We've got delete, insert, tab, select, enter, help. The bog standard buttons on the bottom. On the left hand side, sorry, on the right hand side, you've got absolutely nothing. On the bottom, you've got an expansion slot, which allowed you to plug in such amazing things as an MP3 player. Bearing in mind, this was 1999-2000. You could attach an MP3 player or a card reader, which were basically the same things, except one had a headphone port, one didn't. It was worth it just to buy the MP3 player. Uh, they were very cheap anyway. Uh, you've got the little sticker. I can't believe how well focused this is. Uh, you can see this is a CY6415 that takes 6 volts via DC supply. It's got two batteries which are actually bad in this unit because, because these units are so old the batteries inside have just died basically. You can see I've got mine on charge currently via the excessively large charger which I'll show off later. Maybe. You got the speaker, which produces awful sound. It's one bad thing about this unit, it is a quite a bad sound chip. On the top, you've got a stylus. Yes, a stylus. So, you've got this massive keyboard and a stylus. So, what do you think the stylus is for? Hmm. I'll, give, I'll give you a clue what the stylus is for. Nope, the screen's not touch screen, it's for the buttons. I'm not even kidding. Now, uh, let's power the unit on. I'm going to be using the stylus just for, well, I could, I guess you could say comedic effect. This unit is a little bit dodgy. It's a bit hard to get its power on sometimes. This obviously wasn't a common problem with the unit, it was just this particular unit is a little bit dodgy mainly because the batteries are on their way out and basically the way this thing is wired up internally the battery oh, damn it it's wired the way this unit is wired internally all power must pass through the battery so basically getting it to power on can be a bit of a bit of a fun challenge so let's stick it back on charge hopefully we can get the power on if you'll just give me a moment I'm gonna be off camera for a second just to see if we can get this thing on Had it on earlier. I've only, only received this this morning, so. I may have to open this up and bypass the batteries somehow. Or buy more batteries. You can get batteries for this online. This is such a following for this unit. It's quite impressive how far the actual Cybeco hacking community has gotten this unit. I mean, people still develop games for this unit amazingly. Um, just because of how advanced its hardware was for the time. I mean, this thing was massively advanced for the time. This was released early 1999, 2000. And some of the features of it were absolutely incredible. I'm going to be off camera for a couple more seconds. I do apologise. I'm just going to see if I can get this unit to power on. If not, I'm just going to cry in a hole somewhere. Oh, 
Ah, there we go. We have life. Anyway, this is the unit powering up for the first time. Um, more than 353 games and applications. That's abigo.com. SciOS, whatever operating version it was. See, it powers up relatively quickly. It even powers up quicker than that by default because that was a first turn on, whereas this unit does... Um, it does... Uh, have a quick boot option which is enabled by default which basically means it just powers on very quickly now I'm going to have to tilt it to the side just so you can see the screen properly this is the main interface unfortunately I'm not going to be able to demonstrate most of its most impressive features because I only have one of these units they're quite hard to get hold of these days well they're easy to get hold of but they're expensive um, let's have a look at you and me I'm not sure what this was I can't quite remember Oh, I think this is the dating thing they had built to in, built into it. They decided to try and build a dating service into these devices, I believe. Um, so I can go in and be about you. I want my friend to be. I want a romance with my friend. You are a female. Uh, your age must be from. One years old to three years old. Your height must be nine foot tall. You must be nine foot tall, nine foot three. Actually, one of me enters nine. Let's try seven foot. So it let me enter in ages one to three, but it won't accept nine foot tall. Um, you must be nine foot tall to seven, five foot tall. That makes sense. You must be thirty pounds. Um, uh, your first hobby must be Cybeco computer. Your second hobby must be the computer. Your third hobby must be the internet. Secret fields. I wonder what these are. <laughs> I wonder what these secret fields are for. My penis size is nine inches long. Anyway, um, enough of that. Then you can do a profile for yourself. I probably should look at this off camera. This unit actually came from someone, so I'm not sure if there's anything from that person on here. I haven't quite looked. Oh, you could also set up a Sci page. This was very interesting for the time. Now, Cybeco has worked on sort of a, a mesh network. Basically, if you had 10 Cybecos, they'd all connect to each other. And um, what was interesting about that is it, it allowed such amazing things as Sci page. Basically, side page was a very, very basic thing, but you could, you know, make a web page if you really, really wanted to, filled with whatever you really wanted to fill it with. Then any Cybeco within range of your Cybeco, or one which had previously accessed this, would have access to that. So basically, you could have your own sort of web page only accessible on these units. Uh, you could set up a business card if you really wanted to, and the units glitched out. This is going to be a common occurrence simply because the batteries inside it are fucked. I'm being called on Skype. Let's see who's calling us on Skype, shall we? And tell them to fuck off. Who is it? Is it anyone interesting? Hurry up, computer power up. Uh, damn it. Oh, they stopped calling me now, I know, so I don't care. Right, um, nobody cares. Is it on? Okay, I think it may be the power supply itself that's bad. Looking at it. But anyway, we've got it back on. Let's wait for it to power back up. This is going to be a common thing, simply because until I get new batteries and a power supply which actually functions, I don't think this thing is going to power on again. Oh no, it may be the charging port because I just wiggled it about a bit and the light stopped blinking. I'll try and convince it into powering on again. There we go, it seems to be coming on again. We'll give it one more attempt and if it doesn't work we'll have to wait until I get, oh no, no, we're good, we're good, we're good, we got, we got BIOS, we got BIOS, anyway, this unit also, stop looking back quickly, if you look closely at the circuitry, you can see it's got a vibration motor, which was quite innovative for a games console, bearing in mind this thing was not sold as a mobile phone, nor does it have mobile phone functionality, and um, you've got your two rechargeable batteries, which was also quite impressive, considering the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy no, the Game Boy Advance was rechargeable, wasn't it, if I remember correctly? Or at least the SP was. No, God, I knocked the cable. And yeah, it's definitely the cable. Looks like the charging port on the actual board is damaged. I'll have to be careful with that. Doesn't really matter, anyway. This unit's just a bit of nostalgia. 
So anyway, let's have a quick look. So we were looking at you and me. We'd done the uh, chat was basically chat. Uh, basically, anyone within range would be in a chat, and you could pick any one of these rooms. I'm interested in romantic. Let's talk about romantic. Hi, everybody. It's got flood protection. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, if you'll just give me a second. Quite remember how to do this. Well, I can't remember how to do it. it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, it had quite a cool feature there, but I can't quite remember how to access it, so I won't even mention it. It's also got emails, but it could only email its own units. It could only email another Cybico, or if you had a very, very rare and hard to get hold of add-on for this, which I'll discuss later, you'd be able to send them across the world via the World Wide Web um, from this unit, which was quite impressive. I wonder if this has any emails. Let's have a quick look, shall we? I very much doubt it. If you had one of these, you were like the only person in the neighbourhood to have one. I was lucky. I was lucky enough to have a friend who had one of these with me. We used to play games on it a lot. Nope, there's no emails on here. Any output? Anything sent? Nothing in the outbox. Nothing in sent. And there's obviously going to be nothing in compose because that's how you compose an email. Um, we got side community, which I believe was nothing that interesting, if I remember correctly. At the time, it was amazing, but these days, ah, here we go. And then you can use it. So if you've got a lot of people in an area that use side beacons, and you can see that nobody is a match here because there are no side beacons. Um, quite interestingly, and I'm asking for one to three year olds, so I very, very much doubt that um, they're going to be coming to my door anytime soon. Then we've got applications which is where your applications go of course you've got a couple of applications bundled on unfortunately I can't put more on at the moment because I don't have the cable I will look into getting one but not right now an application called study stools which was a sort of organizer application which was quite interesting um, once again bearing in mind this was released in 2000 um, let's have a look at oh this actually came with a few things on it from the person who had it before me um, rocks are hard, but ones like chalk are soft. Granite, one of the rocks, are very hard. If you get steel nail, it wouldn't. Okay, that's interesting. That was ju that was January two thousand and three. In August, I think they tried using it again. They got some German. Uh, I live in Farringdon, which is in England. I'm not sure what the top phrase means. Being honest, um, I'm learning German, but slowly. In English, you can learn how to read, write, and learn an act out place, such as a, mid, a Midsummer's Night Dream. In March 25th, 2005, she posted... Oh, this is the because we just saw, and it's, for God's sake, it's pink. Um, I am taking geography for my GCSEs. I am going on trip to Switzerland this time next year. I am a bit worried because... She got eaten by a bear, everyone. She got eaten by a bear. Um, anyway... You can make your own assignments. I'm not going to go too much into detail with this because it's not that interesting, being honest. And there you go. You can see biology, and I want a pre-algebra subject. And okay, okay, biology then. Just let me have it. And because I don't want to look it down. And I'd like to add it, please. How do you add? I just dropped the side beaker. Wow, impressive. How do you add an assignment? I can't quite remember. Yeah, save it. There we go. I'm going to view it like from this from now on so you can see me off my hand using the D-pad as well. You can hear the quite annoying little noises it produces. One thing this that lets us down was its sound chip. It wasn't that impressive. Um, it was one one tone. I'm going to point away for a second. Nope, nothing in here. So it's got a phone book, so you could use it as a phone book. Store quite a number of fields. Quite impressive for its time. Uh, organizer, anything in here? Private. As I said, this has come from someone, so I'm not sure. To-do list, nothing. Daily, nothing. Okay, there's nothing. So you could set yourself reminders, and your Cybeco would wake up from sleeping and play an alarm tone to let you know you had things to do, which was quite cool. Um, you could also plug it into the computer and the inbuilt computer application. You could add things from Outlook and other things like that on there, I believe. I can't quite remember. Text editor, anything interesting in here? I'm just going to point away for a second. Oh, 
okay, absolutely nothing. Just that date. And the side page, which is the which I just produced, which is fruity. If anyone comes into the area, they may be slightly surprised to see someone looking for three year olds. Music composer. This was an interesting app, but kind of let down by this thing's crappy sound chip. You'll see what I mean in a second. This is more of a software limitation than anything. Let's just create a song called Poop. Oh, and if you're wondering, the reason they included a stylus, if I can find it, is because these buttons are absolutely freaking tiny. Uh, my finger's going to belt my so I've got very fat fingers, but I've also got very precise fingers in terms of like pressing buttons. But you could use the stylus instead, like so. I'm not going to, because I'm quicker with my finger. That sounds really bad. And here's the music composer. You can press buttons. You can see the problem here. I held that one especially long to show you something. Now let's play that. It has absolutely no concept of tempo at all. Which was a slight limitation of that. Very impressive for the time. Not as impressive as Mario Paint though. That was quite insane. Um, but either way, just a demo of what this thing do. Upload run file manager allowed you to plug it into your computer, which would then allow you to add applications from the internet. A very impressive thing of this. There were no cartridges for this unit. All things were downloaded. Now I'm just going to... Sorry about that. I'm just getting comfortable. So I've just sat in the most uncomfortable position in the universe. Um, there you go. These are all the applications which are currently installed on it. Very, very small, as you can see. Um... Also lets you see all the boot code for the Saibiko. You can see that all the boot code is there as well, which is modifiable on the computer if you just hack these things. These things are very hackable. Most of the files are in standard formats, which are easily readable. You can see the save files there. The music file, which shouldn't be on here as far as I'm aware, because this doesn't have a music unit, but let's just open that up. I think that, yeah, it's the music composer. I thought that was the app for the actual card itself on the bottom that I mentioned earlier. You could plug an MP3 player in there, which I did have as a child. I wish I kept it, because those units are quite rare now. Um, but either way, this is the unit of it. Anyway, that's enough of that. You can see it as a proper file manager, which for the time was revolutionary, consider considering we had the Nokia 3210 around that time, which barely managed Snake. It's just, he's got a calculator as well. Nothing too special. 5 plus 5 equals 10, amazingly. Let's come out of that. That's the end of applications, now we come to the most interesting bit, games. Now unfortunately this didn't come with my favourite game. Well it came with a demo of it, but not the actual game. The only reason it's a demo is because the unit only has one megabyte of memory. The game itself is free on the internet, via the Cybico company. But, um, it's a very large game, and this thing has very limited storage. It's only got one megabyte worth of storage. So they included lots of games rather than one very high quality game. So let's just look at the ones it came with. It's got Pinball Pro. Which I remember being a, an okay pinball game, but the problem being is this screen suffers from ghosting. You'll see in a second. You can see the ball, it's kind of ghosting. I'll play some pinball until I die. Wow, this is fun. Also, the side because vibrating. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but quite violently vibrating. This thing has a very powerful vibrate motor. Anyway, there's that. Yes, I want to quit. It's got a game called Lost in Labyrinth. This was one of my favourites, although playing it now I don't know why it was one of my favourites. The theme tune for it is infuriatingly annoying. This thing has no headphone port, I just realised. The Extreme, I think, did, but this didn't. I had an extreme as well, that's another story. You already have key one. Let's go this way. This game is basically where you go around and find monsters and keys and shoot them. Oh, a treasure chest! I just collected a treasure chest, which I'm not sure what it did, but. The unit vibrates violently every time that door opens and closes. 
I want to find a monster. This game was quite impressive for the time, to be fair. Okay, that way, please. This D-pad is kind of hard to use. A cherry! Don't know what those numbers mean at the moment. We'll figure it out, though. Damn it, trying to play this through a viewfinder and with a crappy D-pad. I will find a monster before we continue. Only because I remember them being hilariously badly detailed. Ammo of some sort, even though we haven't used any ammo so it's completely worthless. Did you know pressing tab opens a map, does it? So it does. We are there. Something is directly ahead. Oh wow. Oh, another treasure chest. This game does have monsters in it, I swear. Key. You already have key ones, we're going. Is that a monster? Nope, that's a. I don't know what that was. I honestly have no idea. Here's a door though. Ooh, a different looking area. A key! You already have key one. That's like the third key one I've come across then. We will find a goddamn monster. Not sure what that is, but oh well, let's give up on that. Let me just save the game. Also, this game saved on cartridges, or the internal, uh, the internal memory. Sorry, um, no need for cartridges or memory cards or anything like that. Quite impressive. Uh, the next game we got is Reverse Eye, which was excellent. I loved the Reverse Eye game on this. It was the AI was surprisingly difficult. You may be looking at this with a bit of confusion, as I was when I saw this for the first time. A game called Men's Room. Let's play. It's a breakout ripoff of some sort. It's not a bad ripoff, actually, because the ball can actually move at any angle. The only strange thing is, is it's based on toilets, hilariously. Um, as you can see, there are toilet rolls and bombs. Bomb, bombs aren't in toilets. Bombs destroy everything within the vicinity. And basically, this game is called Men's Room. I'm not even sure why. Somebody must have been high when thinking up this game's name, because it is very strange. Just exit out of that. Um... Okay, we've got Silandia Info. Unfortunately, I can't get the wrong with this, and I really wish I could, because this was one of my favourite games, but this is a little intro of it. One day I'll get married. I'll be here soon. Would you like to come play with me? You can download the full version from sidebeaker.com. No, you can't, because it's down now. The domain is actually coming up for expiring. I'm looking into buying it. But that's another story. Um, basically, that game was a sort of Neopets-esque thing, Tamagotchi-esque thing, but what was really fucking good about it, and why I loved it, is my friend had one as, as a Saibiko as well, and we would play this game, and you could join the Saibikos together by the wireless very easily, and then your pet from this would walk over to their world, and their pet would, if it chose to, walk over to your world. You could have an unlimited number of pets in your world and vice versa. And basically, you know, you could babysit another person's pet. It was a, it was really, really detailed. It required feeding, cleaning, all that, all the good stuff, really, um, which doesn't sound fun t by today's standards, but at the time, excellent. Saibiko Superbike was a racing game, which I remember being quite good. Um, Saibiko Superbike. With the most crappy sound known to man. You've probably realised just how bad the sound is. Let's do the qualifying lap, why not? Press enter and hold to accelerate. You need two hands for this, so I'm just going to have to do this. See? I'm probably going to fail horribly now. Oh god, right, right, right. Oh god, I'm in the grass and the unit's vibrating crazily, telling me I'm doing bad. That's enough of that. 
you get the idea. The graphics were surprisingly good for this game at the time. Um, you've got NCS blazing boards, which, being honest, I don't remember a lot about, but now I think about it, I do remember it. It's a forward-on skating game, which was also a lot of fun. Um, if I remember, there were some crazy jumps and stuff like that. This one's taking a long time. Do you want to turn off communications for better performance while playing in the game? Yes. Uh, I never saw that before. Oh, this game actually had inbuilt challenges. Uh, where you get a chance to win. Do you want to publish your best score on Sabicator.com? No, because it's down. Blaze icons. These make you go really quickly at some point, if I remember right. Ollie! Ollie! Ollie up and down. Grind. Backslide. Board slide. I'm on fire! Front slide. He was a. If I remember correctly, there's a limited amount of time. Oh yeah, there is in the top left-hand corner, and basically you just have to score the highest score in that time by doing tricks. And there are a number of tricks. I can't remember how to do them though. But I'm on fire currently, and all being on fire means is you get double the score, and also the unit vibrates like you've done something naughty, because the unit has not stopped vibrating for about a minute now. My hand is becoming numb from the vibration. Just to give you an idea how strong it is, I'm going to rest my camera on the unit. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but the vibration on this unit is excellent. Anyway, exit. I'd like to leave the game, please. Am I not allowed to leave? Is this like the Hotel California? I want to leave! Okay, I think something bugged out there. Oh no, I switched it off. Why wouldn't it let me close the game though? What the hell's going on? I wanna leave the game! I thought I just pressed the home button at the top. Oh, pressing home took me home. Okay. That's slightly strange. I've never done that before. But either way, you, see, you get the idea. Are there any other games? I don't think so. Oh, that's it for there. Settings. Now I'm not going to spend too much detail here. I'm just going to show you what this thing can do. You can set a password to the unit, um, which was surprisingly secure. A reset wouldn't get rid of it. I actually locked myself out of my original Cybeco. Luckily enough, the Cybeco Corporation, while they were still around, were nice enough to send me a brand new unit because I'd locked myself out of it. But they were very nice about it. We sent them an email and they had a new unit out to us. They were very nice. Um, you can set up alerts. Uh, you can control what the alerts do. Um, see how quick you want your desktop to be. Like I'm gonna set mine to very slow, just see what that looks like. Slow. And I turn on intro screens. I have no idea what that is. And measurement units are currently US. I'm set it to EU. This may be a US unit. I'm not sure. I'm starting to believe this may be a US unit. It came from the UK. Oh god, you can see the difference already. Look at this. On this is an intro screen. These are pretty cool. Look at these effects. Bear in mind this is early, you know, this is two, turn of the century stuff. Really smooth considering. Right, I just thought you guys might be a little bit interested in that. Um, I think I've shown off everything I really can. I would show off the internet functionality, but for that I'd need... Ooh, I was going to talk about that. There was a peripheral produced by the Cybeco Corporation towards the end of this thing's life where you'd plug it into a working internet connect a computer with a working internet connection and with a little bit of setup it would then start broadcasting and with that broadcast any Cybeco in the area would then have internet access so you'd then be able to access the internet on these machines. Now bear in mind the default browser that comes on the Cybeco I can't quite remember if it comes with it. Um, no it doesn't. But you can install it. Um, was awful. It basically only allowed you to access the Cybeco website. You could download applications to the unit from the internet 
on the unit itself. You didn't even need a computer, if I remember correctly. And basically, that was you know that was quite impressive for the time, over the air games. But that particular peripheral was ridiculously expensive when it came out, and they released it just as the company went bust or you know stopped producing these things. So it was pretty much pointless. Um, you can do it with it. You can do the same thing with another Cybeco Classic. You can plug this into a computer, and any other Cybeco Classics in the area would pick up the internet connection. Uh, although that had a much shorter range than the original uh, peripheral. But unfortunately, I don't have another Cybeco to test that with, so unfortunately, I can't really show you that. Did I show all the applications? I think I did. Apart from, yeah, everything was there. But. Just saw this as a little curiosity. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize for the ramble. Um, oh, and I'll also just show you the quick packaging just for completeness. Um, I'll show you the packaging. You can grab it wherever I hit it. Um, where did I throw the packaging? Ah, here it is. There we go. This is how you know my videos are raw. Cyber Girl, wireless entertainment computer, entertainment. Yes, entertainment. You read that correctly. Uh, you can read this yourself. Wireless text, drop an email, interactive gaming, friend, find a vibration, let's see if someone's near. Organizer, cybergirl.com. Loads of specifications. Bear in mind this was aimed at a toy. This was quite surprising seeing specifications like this on the side of a device so, should we say, primitive. Um, you can see the specifications here, mock and spend ages reading through them. This thing ran iOS 1.3, which was actually updatable, believe it or not. You could update it to whatever version you wanted. Um, you can see a little diagram there with, with everything it does. On the back, we've got a load of marketing bump. Nothing really interesting apart from the topic, which is absolutely hilariously patronizing. The human is a raging social animal, given you are human. Hopefully, when two, or more, two, when two or more humans get together, one will inevitably open its mouth to talk. Yeah, I'm just going to go down slowly so you guys can read if you really want to. Pause the video if you require. I won't be offended. These icons are kind of funny. It vibrates. Your digital RF communicator. Yes, this thing used RF rather than Wi-Fi, quite impressively. A little warning on the bottom telling you it may be different to what's in the package, um, which is kind of funny. And then you got all this marketing bump in here. Yeah! I'm not going to bother reading through all this. I'll just scroll through as I did before. If I read it, pause it. See the actual logo, person screaming. Hyper scans. Plus labyrinth. That's that's one of the enemies I was talking about. You can see how just how badly detailed they were. Uh, text chat and email. Blah blah blah. blah. You can read all the bump if you really want to. Plug into the internet mothership. That was a lot of fun. That game there, Fat Cash. That game was a lot of fun. I remember that one. Uh, my, pretty much my favorite game apart from Cylandia. Cy Basic. This came with its own version of Basic. You could program games for it yourself, completely free of charge, if I remember correctly. Cylandia. Check out Cylandia. The Bright Review as well. Blah blah blah. Lost in Labyrinth. Lost in Labyrinth. And that's basically it. The person who sent me this didn't include any of the documentation. It's probably long lost now. It's not really a problem because most of it's on the box, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, this is quite an impressive little unit. Oh, and according to the Cybeco Corporation, this purple colour is blue. Blue. Um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that little video. Um, I shall see you probably in the Tech It series next.